section and here today with me I have Dan Patel and I have uh, Tom Janizak and there are two handlers with us and we work for uh, all of us work for K9 East. Now currently uh, for the K9 section in Massachusetts we have uh, 40 or 41 teams. We just actually just got an addition of six handlers uh, that's including them that are going to be training up with new dogs now. And uh, what we do is we divide the state into half by 495. And so you either work canine east or you work canine west. And that being said, if you're working canine east, you could be anywhere. You could be up in Lawrence, you could be down in Fall River, in Boston, up in Gloucester, wherever uh, the calls take you is where we end up going. Same with the west. So at the west, you could be out in Chicopee, you could be in Worcester, uh, Southbridge, Fitchburg, Gardner, wherever the calls take you. So we do a lot of traveling around with the dogs and are basically available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for any town or our own job that needs assistance with uh, canines. So, does anybody know uh, what we use for dogs? What type of dogs do we do use? Anybody know, little kids? Canines, what kind of dogs? Do you know, uh, are they... Police dogs. Yep, are they Labradors or what kind of dogs? German Shepherds, okay, we, we use a lot of German Shepherds in the unit and then uh, since 9-11 actually, everybody wants to have a, a canine program now, uh, whether it's security, law enforcement, military, and so uh, every, the high demand on, on dogs. And so it's very difficult to get dogs and so over the years since 9-11, we've actually used a lot more uh, of other breeds or mixed breeds. We use uh, Belgian Malinois, which we uh, we have uh, a lot of now. Now they kind of look like a shepherd, except they're wrapped a little tighter and uh, they have a short reddish coat to them. And then we use uh, dogs that are kind of mixes uh, that are called uh, Dutch Shepherds. Uh, we have one of them today, Canine Nico. And uh, those are the, the major breeds that we use. Now we used to run uh, Bloodhounds, uh, we don't have any bloodhounds right now, and we used uh, one of the handlers uh, really like the Rottweilers, and so we had uh, one guy that had one or two or three uh, Rottweilers through his career. Now, what do our dogs do? Does anybody, can anybody tell me what the police dog does? What are his jobs? Does anybody know? What does he do? Chase bad guys, yes. Yeah, so uh, basically the dog can be used for tracking and the dog will use his nose and he can go and find a person that uh, has, has left the scene. Now, uh, 
they're all trained in multiple areas and so through our basic patrol class they're, they're trained in obedience uh, tracking they'll do uh, uh, evidence recovery which is uh, human odor is on an object a gun or a knife and they can find the object uh, they're trained in uh, uh, aggression and those, those are the uh, major areas that we, we train them in. Uh, we also do like uh, scouting. So if uh, someone's hiding in the woods, we don't know how they got in there. The dog can use the wind and kind of find a person floating. So now we're going to take one of our dogs out and show you a little bit of what we do in patrol class and stuff like that. And this is going to be obedience. Uh, K9 Nico is going to come out. Dan, how old is K9 Nico? K9 Nico is five years old. He is a Dutch Shepherd. He is a very good working dog. He has had a lot of success on our job and he, uh, he's very good with people too. So Dan is going to show you uh, the obedience factor. Now everything that we do with our dogs on our job stems from obedience. Now you have to have control over the dog to have success and have the dog listen to you. So what he's doing now is he's doing some on lead obedience with the dog. So wherever Dan goes, the dog's gonna go with him. And he's gonna follow him around, he's gonna look up at him, and then he's gonna do whatever Dan tells him to do. So if he stops, the dog's gonna sit, he can tell the dog to down, and the dog's gonna follow him at a tight heel. This is called the heel position that he's moving the dog around in right now. Now, why does he do all this? The dog does all this because he wants to be rewarded. And what's the reward for the dog? His ball. That's it. The dogs just work for the ball and they do this in a positive manner. So again, we have to have control over the dog and they do it because they think it's fun. So most of the, the, uh, the tasks that we ask the dog to do, he does it because he wants the ball. He wants to be rewarded in a positive manner, which is usually playtime for the dog. Now Dan is going to do the same thing with K9 Nico. He's going to do some off-lead obedience with the dog. And again, it almost looks like he has a lead on the dog. The dog is stuck to his side and he's going to move wherever Dan goes and look up at him. And again, he can do uh, sits, downs, he can do uh, distance work with the dog, he can lead the dog, pick him up, and uh, the dog is going to uh, do all of these tasks for Dan because he wants to get rewarded again. And again, the, the reward that he's going to get is a ball. And there's this reward. Okay, a little round of applause for K9 Nico. So he's gonna do uh, one more little drill with Nico before he finishes. He'll play with him a little bit just so that Nico gets a uh, good reward time for his uh, job well done and he's gonna do some tactical obedience. And this would be if we had to go into a more high risk situation and lead the dog and go off to an area of cover and then call the dog up and move kind of tactically with the dog. And that would be uh, looking for real bad guys and we have to move in a tactical manner. Now, K9 Nico can uh, do these uh, these drills with uh, Dan on this also. comes right up to him and then he just waits for Dan to either move with him or uh, Dan can move away and then call the dog back up to him and he can do all this off lead so that he can pay attention to whatever type of call we're at We're going to throw this out for the next dog and he's going to search around and he's going to find it for us. Okay, so how do we pick these dogs? Any idea? What do we look for in a, in a canine? Well, we're looking for a stable dog. We usually get the dogs uh, green overseas. Now, when I say green, uh, the dogs have no training in them. Uh, the only training that they do uh, 
it get overseas is they, they're tested for their, their bite ability. Now that's more genetics than not. Uh, obviously over here, if you have a pet shepherd, you probably don't want them necessarily biting you. And so a lot of that has been uh, bred out of a lot of dogs for that are that are pets. So overseas, uh, they, they still have a full mouth and they, they bite and hold. So it's actually very humane. Uh, they're, they're not ripping at you or anything. They're, they're holding the person uh, until we can get them. So that's one of the things that we look for. How old are the dogs when we get them? We usually get dogs uh, anywhere. The youngest is probably nine months, uh, and then the oldest might be two and a half. We don't go much older than that. A two and a half year old dog can actually have some certification in them. We don't necessarily need them. Uh, a dog that's three is kind of set in his ways at that point, and so now you might get some bad habits if you accept a dog that's three years old and you try to get them to do your games that you're, you're trying to uh, have them come up and, and, and use as a, a police dog. So uh, we look for the dog's uh, use of his nose. We want to see if the dog is going to be more visual or with his nose. And again, to reward the dog, we want a dog that has a lot of ball drive and the dog that uh, is really acceptable of the ball and kind of almost crazy out of his head to get rewarded. That way you know that the dog is going to perform tasks to accept that reward. So those are those are the main, uh, the main things that we look at when we first start out a dog. Now we have uh, Trooper Janizak. Tom is going to take his dog Tank, canine Tank here. He's going to uh, be put on an evidence recovery search. And so he's gonna smell the ground and he's gonna look for human odor. So a lot of the detection that we do is for human odor, whether it's tracking, or finding uh, evidence in the woods, the dog is actually finding uh, human odor on that object. That is what he is looking for. So if it's in tall grass, he's just gonna home into that human odor and then he'll find that, that article. And so there's, there's a, a couple different responses that you can have. So when we do articles, we uh, want them to be more passive than not. And so they'll come to the article, they will down uh, by the article, and they will sit and stare, or, or stare at the article, and uh, then they'll receive their reward. Round of applause for Canine Tank. Well, one of the reasons that we do that, we, we want a passive uh, response, is because, again, we don't want a dog picking up a, a live weapon of any sort and running around with it, and then all of us have to run for cover. So, what else? Uh, so, when we teach... Yes? What protection does a dog have? Uh, yeah, I'll get to that later, but uh, yeah, for protection for the dogs, we do have uh, Mass Festa Dog is one of the big organizations, uh, nonprofit in Massachusetts that provides uh, ballistic vests for uh, most uh, departments in Massachusetts, and uh, that, that gives the dog in uh, high-risk situations uh, a vest like we wear. So when we do, uh, one of the other things that dogs do is they track. Now, who's, who here knows about uh, Charlie Brown, Peanuts? Has anybody seen Charlie Brown? Yes, yes? Okay, who's the guy that has the big cloud around him all the time? It's like dirt. Pigpen. Everybody know Pigpen? Okay, so that's kind of like what our dogs are searching for when they are going on a track or finding articles. So just imagine that big swirl is around all of us right now. We are constantly uh, shedding our skin wraps off our body and that creates the human odor. And along with perfumes and other bodily uh, odors and oils coming from our bodies, we have our own scent picture. Each one of us has our own scent picture. Now the dog can be given an article and he can match up that, that article to the person and that's how he kind of tracks. So he can go to an area, catch that odor, and then he'll follow it through wherever it goes to that person, kind of like pig pen. We can't see it, but it's happening over and over again. And that's how the dogs work when it comes to tracking. It's kind of neat. So, what we're going to show you now is another aspect of the uh, canine program for patrol work, and that uh, is uh, aggression. And we're going to have canine Tate come out here again, and he's going to demonstrate some uh, aggression for you. Now, Dan Patel is wearing, uh, that's just a, a sleeve, it's a bite sleeve. 
We also have uh, bite suits that we can work with the dogs, and we also do aggression work with muzzles, and then we do uh, some civil work with the dogs too. So, Canine Tank's already queued up on Trooper Patel. We're waiting for a clear path. over the dog if you think about it so if the dog is going in there and he's very nasty and doesn't want to listen to anybody he's angry then that we can't control the dog so if the dog thinks it's a fun game and is happy to do it then when we give him a command he'll listen because he wants to do it again he wants to do it over and over again and so that's what keeps our dogs nice and stable so they they uh we all just uh enjoy doing this as a, a fun game and so we have, again, we have 40, 41 handlers throughout the state and we're all kind of like strategically placed. We all live uh, just all around the, the Commonwealth. Where do our dogs live? Our dogs live at our houses, okay? Uh, most of the dogs live outside at your house and there's a, like a six by 12 kennel and then we'll have a dog house attached to the, uh, to the kennel. And uh, I have electricity out in my uh, dog house, so in the winter time it goes up to 40 degrees, so it's very humane. If it gets too cold, we also have crates we can put the dog in in the basement. Why do we keep our dogs outside? Most of us keep the dogs outside because it is uh, the area in which we work mostly, okay? You want the dog to kind of be in his environment. Again, they're not pets, they are work dogs. So if we are tracking someone through Marsh in the middle of January and everybody's getting wet, you don't want the dog to be dreaming about sitting on the couch in front of the fireplace and not wanting to be out there doing his job. So if he's out there all the time, that's what he's used to and he just wants to do those tasks. That's one of the reasons why they, they live outdoors. Now, so those dogs do everything with us, okay? If we go to court, the dog goes to court. If we go on details, the dog goes on details. And so that makes us very uh, readily available for additional calls, too. You guys ready for Yeah. Okay, here comes K9 Nico again. And see how well he listens? Just hands right here. You can touch both of your hands. Final warning with some dogs. K9 Nico right there. <laughs> so that right there is just shows how environmentally stable K9 Nico is also. So that dog could be tossed around, picked up, moving around, and he still stays on that one bite and hold. Okay, so what he just did there is he demonstrated some more obedience with the dog. If he had to call the dog off of a, a send uh, after someone, he has the ability to do that verbally. So the dog's going down, and you would think that he just wants to go bite, but he hears that he's not supposed to, so he downs quickly, and then he comes right back to him. Very good obedience with canine. So again, that's a, a, our foundation. It's all obedience. Obedience, obedience, obedience. With the dog. So I said our dogs come mostly from overseas. Where do the dogs actually come from? We, we uh, get our dogs from the Czech Republic, we get them from Belgium, we get them from Holland. We've had some come from Mexico, some, uh, some uh, French dogs that we have. The different languages that we use with the dogs are, uh, we, we use Dutch, German, uh, Czech, uh, some have French commands. Uh, and basically, wherever the dog came from, they've been given initial commands. The dogs cost uh, probably at least $7,000 for a green dog. That's, that's what we're paying now. And uh, a dog with training could be uh, $8,500, $9,000 is usually what the state pays anyways. We don't, we don't pay much more. Uh, they, don't, they don't give us much more money. So uh, that's, what we, that's what we pay. 
how does the training work? So when we do original patrol class with the dogs, it's 14 weeks long, and that's when they learn all those uh, different tasks that I had told you about before. They have 14 weeks to learn all that, so they have to be at a very mature age that they can understand and learn these tasks. Okay, then after that, the dogs, they're all due purpose dogs, all right? They're not just uh, patrol dogs, they also do something in addition to. So that would be narcotics detection, cadaver work, or they can do uh, uh, ballistic dogs, which actually can uh, detect gunpowder and locate firearms if they're thrown, or in school lockers, or on searches of uh, houses or cars. All right, when they go back to school for these specialties here, that, that can be uh, another additional 10 weeks of training for the dogs. So in between the two classes, you might have a month off or something like that. So it's almost, it's almost five months, six months before a dog is fully trained up for us. So it's a big investment for the handler and the dog. After all, the handler actually trains with the dog himself and an instructor, so they're both off the road for that amount of time of the training. So it's a, it's a, big, it's a big investment. And then how long do our dogs last? Our dogs probably will be in service from, again, the age of, you know, maybe 14, 18 months average, uh, up to maybe 9, 10 years old, until medical catches up with the dogs. Once uh, medical is starting to catch up with the dogs, then the dog will come offline, and then we can start uh, an additional dog for that handler if he wishes to stay in the unit with, with that dog. Uh, what else? What happens to the dog once he retires? Well, right now, uh, the dog can become a secondary dog while his medical is still uh, all right, uh, but then he's, he's retired. What, what happens to the dog? The dog can uh, usually stay with the handler, all right? After all, we live with that dog at our house. He's part of our family. We work with him every single day for seven to nine years of that dog's life. So most of the guys are attached to those dogs, and we'll keep that dog uh, for the rest of the, the canine's life, yes. And so uh, then, then you'll, you, you might have, uh, for, for example, now I'm on my third dog. He's a, a four-year-old uh, dog from Czech Republic. His name's Rex. And at home, I have a dog from Belgium, and he's a 12-and-a-half-year-old shepherd. Uh, and so he, he's at home kind of enjoying himself. In the air <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, not, not too much, but. <laughs> All right, so uh, how about some questions? Anybody have some questions that uh, I did not answer for you yet? Not many. I guess I did a good job. Does each trainer train from the very beginning? Excuse me? Does each trainer train the dog from the very beginning? Yes, the question was, does each trainer train the dog from the very beginning? So when we do a class, for example, now we're training up six new guys. There's one head trainer and one assistant. And so, yes, that dog will train the entire patrol class, which is 14 weeks. He might not be the same uh, trainer for the detection class, which is the narcotics or cadaver, etc. Uh, but it could be the same guy. It depends on who's available at the time. It's a, it's a, it's a big commitment for the trainer too, because he's off the road with his own dog for that long, training up all these other dogs. So he doesn't get to work his dog either. Yes. How do you not have a trainer? How do you become a trainer? Basically, uh, I don't know, dumb luck, I guess. Uh, you, you become a trainer, uh, the guys, I'm one of the trainers. If you show an interest in how the dog actually works and, and you, you want to make uh, the dog stronger and stuff, you usually get interested. And so then there's seminars that you can go to and then you can start assisting at training. Now, getting back to our training, once the dogs actually go through all these initial classes, they can get rusty just like humans. Humans, what, what are we? we? We basically are lazy if we don't keep up doing what we're supposed to do. So we actually are allowed to train one day a week uh, with our dogs. So we don't have to necessarily uh, work the road. We get together in a small group of about seven handlers and we do training with the dog, working on the different aspects. And so if you wanted to be a trainer, you would help out at these maintenance days also until you have enough time in the, the canine unit to become an assistant trainer and then a trainer. What about just a regular like handler like you guys? Uh, just Yep, they're all just regular handlers like me. So they, they just learn through doing themselves. Uh, probably the earliest you would become involved in training is uh, you know three years and then five years to become a full trainer. Anybody else? Are we gonna see your job? Yes, I'll pull out my guy too. We can break down a little more and ask some more intimate questions, but yes, I will pull out Rex so that he's not just sitting in the air-conditioned car, although he's probably quite happy. 
Uh, yes, what's your question? Do the dogs get along with other dogs? That's a good question. Now, so it, it seems like to me, whenever we do calls, especially in the cities, these guys will actually back me up here. Uh, it seems like everybody has to bring their own dog out while we're trying to work and find the bad guy through the cities. That being said, we want to have a nice stable dog that can actually work around other dogs. So the dogs really don't get distracted anymore. Some of our older dogs may be used to when our selection process wasn't as good. They can work by other dogs or other animals and continue on with uh, the tasks that they are doing, whether tracking through a city, etc. Now, do they actually play with other dogs? Most of them don't. Uh, if if it, you have other pets at home, you, you might be able to introduce them to them. The, these dogs here think that they're the alpha males, that they're the, the top dog. And so some of them might not be able to actually play with other dogs, but at the same time, they won't get distracted by them. Yes. Sorry, given what you just said, how does Rex get along with your Uh, They're cordial. <laughs> <laughs> so their, their kennels are next to each other. They don't necessarily uh, run around with each other if I'm not around. Okay. How's that? <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So if there's no other uh, real big questions here, we'll, we'll break off in a little bit and you can walk around and see the, the different dogs and say hi. I, I hope you enjoyed yourself and uh, by all means, ask all the questions you want to ask, okay? Is it yes. Ball or all of them? I mean, they also have some balls. So it could be anything for a reward for the dog, whatever works for them. Now, so when we do detection work, they actually use a wrapped up towel, okay. and so it's different. And so, uh, depending on the task, they might have a different reward. But most of the time, it's something that's going to last, and uh, it's something that. So a, a, a Kong. A con won't necessarily animate itself like a ball will sometimes. So like a, if a ball, it can start blowing and rolling by itself and come to life. And you don't necessarily want that for a reward uh, for the dog to, you know, basically get sucked into the thing moving on itself. But uh, Cause they all seem to have the same thing. That's why yeah, out. yeah. And the cons work pretty good. And uh, so that, that's that's usually how that works. So it's, it's, it's either the Kong or the bite work, it's, it's the actual bite or uh, for drug work, it's a towel. Yeah, yeah. So, any, uh, any other questions? Yeah, they, so the, these dogs, all they want to do is do the tasks that, that uh, you know. Constantly aware. What's that? Constantly aware. Yeah, so anytime they see us put on the blacks at home, they know something's going on and they get to go on the cruiser and so they get all excited. It's kind of like a hunting dog, you know, same idea. Yeah. So they just want to go to work and, uh, hopefully get to, to go play, you know, that to, to them everything is play.